Oh. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. Feeling tongue-tied, hummingbird hazards, and all-out pandemonium. Today, we are breaking down and reacting to all of the mammoth-sized medical scenes and intense injuries of Mortal Kombat's animalities. Mortal Kombat! Animality. Let's dive right in. What? That is sick. That's so cool. Scorpion bites, they hurt like heck. I'd probably have to ask my dear friend, Coyote Peterson, about scorpion bites. Most of the time, scorpion stings are not fatal. There is like 1,500 species or something crazy number like that, and maybe only 30 of them have a sting that can get you, so to speak. So most of the time, you're probably okay. What? what? Just like a lot of the other venom that we see in other insects, creatures, that sort of stuff, most of it is like a neurotoxin and like a myotoxin, meaning the proteins, the peptides, everything that's injecting into that area will affect the nerves and the muscles and the cells, thus giving you pain and different types of effects of like spasm or paralysis, those sorts of stuff. This. Oh my gosh. Animality. Skin, muscle, connective tissue, gone. All that's left is bone structure. Whoa, cool. What would be equivalent? Maybe totally dipping somebody's body in acid. Has anybody seen out there in museums where they do the anatomy like body worlds or body exhibit? There's skeleton sections where it's just a skeleton. Hey, it's my buddy Noah. No, I'm just kidding, but I played this character. Oh my gosh, reminds me of the plan from Little Shop of Horrors. Anybody seen that? Let me know in the comments. Me. Look at this tongue, holy cow. What? What? Injuries that we see relating to compressive forces, a lot of times it's like car accidents, or you can think about somebody just like being crushed because they fell from a great height landing on the ground. It's kind of the same impact type forces as crush injuries. Besides fractures, we worry about like the breakdown of cells and elevated potassium levels can lead to cardiac arrhythmias and cardiac arrest. <laughs> oh, look at this. Is that a T-Rex? I think it's a T-Rex. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> they did such a good job. You did a great job out there. Amputation of the right arm, lots of the red stuff flying. If you survive this, right, we worry about like infections. You know that the human mouth is much more dirty than animals. Obviously we treat animal bites in the emergency department. Typically dogs and cats are the most common. Sometimes we'll have smaller creatures. We do worry about the animals that can potentially give rabies, such as skunks, foxes, raccoons, kind of like medium sized wild animals. Oh, this is a woolly mammoth, right? Holy cow. That tossed and spiked, right? Oh my gosh. Look how sharp that potentially is and impaled straight through the spine in the back. You're paralyzed from that level down right through your major blood vessels that are running down. The aorta runs down on the back of the spine on the inside on the left versus the veins coming up from the lower extremities are running back on the inside on the right of our bodies until it hits into the liver as it's cruising up through that area. Oh, a ram of some sort. Oof. Oh, very cool. Blunt trauma so hard causing either vomiting of blood or coughing up blood. Hemoptysis versus hematemesis. Two fancy medical words. Heme, blood, it's the precursor. You know, a lot of times we see in shows all this blood coming out of the mouth. Sometimes it's real, sometimes it wouldn't anatomically make sense. Here, it potentially would. Porcupine quill injuries? Yes, definitely would show up to an emergency department in an area where you would see porcupines, not where I live. We don't see these very often, but again, treated all very similar. They are puncture wounds. Are they like dangerous, so to speak, from toxins? No, but they hurt. These are massive. These are like the javelin that you'd see thrown at the Olympics. 
So a penetrating trauma to somebody's head like that will need to get checked immediately without pulling that out. So you're gonna pull that out in the operating room if you're still alive. It depends on the structures that it went through. It might be low enough to have missed a lot of the major structures of the hemispheres of your brain. It could go through your midbrain where all your major structures are. That's kind of at the beginning of where your brainstem is. Brainstem! Your autonomic nervous system, which affects your heartbeat as well as your respiratory drive. Oh, a cobra snake. Oh, oh, didn't even bite him. You're getting crushed on the outside. Equivalent would be massive car accidents where you get crushed or in dumpster truck by accident. Slow pressure on the area. You won't be able to expand your chest to be able to breathe. Ribs crack pretty darn easily under this type of force. It can puncture into your own lungs, causing bleeding or puncturing holes into the lung, making breathing even that much more difficult. The skin color changed to a bluish purple, which is what we see when people can't breathe. Oh, octopus. So your body is pulled apart. You haven't succumbed to the injury yet. You're not going to die immediately. A lot of times we see in shows, movies, games, people die pretty quickly when in real life, it takes a little bit longer. Drowning injury, so screaming underwater, hard to do, and then you take a breath and you're going to either inhale the water into your lungs or swallow. At some point, you're going to be doing both and then you're going to have a drowning event. Oh my gosh, pandas. Panda. Ow, that area you're gonna be ripping right through your brachial artery. That's why there would be a lot of bleeding on that side. If you hit the artery, it's gonna squirt out in a pulsatile manner because of your heartbeat versus the vein is going to bleed out more in a stream. Typically not this thin and easily bleeding, so to speak, unless there is some sort of blood abnormality, elevated lactic acid, decreased pH of your blood, or you're on a blood thinner. Oh, arm didn't come off where it was bitten, it came off more proximal. And it's almost like the toys that we used to use as kids where the shoulder attaches versus like mid humerus here where it should have broken off from. So you'd actually have a place to put a tourniquet. Now you just have no arm there. It's just a socket. So now you have to try to find the vessels to stop the bleeding. What you're gonna do is just shove a bunch of material gauze into the cavity and put pressure on it as best you can. It's pretty gnarly and massive. Oh, that was actually a funny. I made a funny. Mortal Kombat loves to cut bodies in half. You have something called the pubic symphysis. It's actually a cartilage in the front disc that it separates during childbirth for females and their pelvis actually opens up. That's basically where this tear starts and then splits all the way through. That doesn't happen. But then you also have this bad bites to the lower extremities. So they're crush injuries plus open wounds. Typically needs to be washed out in the operating room, especially if there's a broken bone. Whoa, we got a bee. Is that a bee? Is that a yellow jacket? What is that? Who's allergic to bee stings? Let me know in the comments. It's a very common allergy to have. Just be aware, make sure you have your EpiPens, know your environment, and get out of there if you have an allergy to bees. Bees are really important for the environment, having to do with pollination and keeping different species going. Ouch. These Mortal Kombat animalities might be all about elevating your moves and beastly transformations. If you're looking to transform your own skills and focus, check out Level Up by my company, Life Happens. Grab your own Level Up at lifehappens.com and on Amazon. Oh, a hummingbird. Very cool. Very cool stuff. Oh, not cool. Not cool. We'll use needles about that long to do needle decompression for somebody who has a tension pneumothorax where the air in the chest is pressing down on the lung, causing cardiac abnormalities. To be able to help fix somebody who has a pneumothorax or air around the lung, we have to do a tube thoracostomy. We make an incision, we'll dissect down to the chest wall, and then we'll puncture through. Once we have a hole, we'll actually put a tube through that hole. Oh, a rhinoceros. Oh.
that whole angle of like going like through the groin. My groin! I mean, this is a potentially survivable injury. Your lungs and your heart are still okay. You just have to make sure you don't bleed out. But the rhinoceros is going to take that horn out and now you have a big gaping hole. What are you gonna do emergently? Like that aorta might have been ruptured, so you need to clamp it off for now to see if you can actually repair it and find the ends and put it back together. Ooh, I do not like spiders. Ah, oh. we're actually seeing maybe some intestines come flying out and they're coming out in pieces. Maybe it looks like a little bit of blood with it as well, but at least it's not like one just stringy piece. All the intestines are attached by mesentery. So they're all connected by almost a webbing. So it needs to be shown in the future games. Oh. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. Impaled through maybe your occipital lobe in the back, going straight through the front, through the frontal bone. That's a lot of tissue to go through. Definitely not really survivable. It's just so wide. So typically we'll have impaled objects that are a lot thinner. So it might go through less brain tissue, causing less trauma and less displacement. <laughs> We see a lot of people who have burn injuries. Most of the time, burn injuries actually go home from the emergency department versus having to be admitted to a burn center. It just depends on very simply how much of the body is burned or a specific area of the body. Ears, nose, toes, uh, genitals, anything circumferential. Even though there might be small wounds, they definitely want to get checked out at a burn center. Whoa, wolf, double wolf. One's a magical one. Oh. Yeah, ouch. Wolf, you know, similar to dog bites. They grab, they bite, and they also rip, causing the destruction that way, which is what they're depicting here. They're gonna be dirty wounds, so they need to be cleaned out. The puncture wounds are really hard to clean. So if they were just lacerations, much easier to clean, but because they're puncture wounds, if they're embedded deep and they're really hard to clean out, that is why they are covered with antibiotics. If you guys enjoyed watching this, definitely binge watch this playlist right here. And do me a favor, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.